Hello, everybody. It's been a long time since I put out a podcast of some sort, but I really just had to for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, This will be a spoiler cast, and I am joined uh, by Lauren. Hey there. Uh, She's been in a couple videos. We used to do a podcast, kind of, and then it kind of fizzled out. I feel like the uh, last one we did was Evil Within. (laughs) Oh, that's right. We did do a spoiler cast for that. Yeah, um... I thought about putting out a video for Final Fantasy VII Remake by myself, but then I thought, I'm going to wait for one of my friends to finish it, and you're the first one, so... Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! I, I, I had a late start. It it got delayed in shipping. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was crazy. Uh, the, the two of us were very crazy about... Well, actually, I was more crazy about how to get a copy. I switched three different carriers... <laughs> and then eventually I decided to go through PSN just to make double sure that I will get a copy. And you got to play it on opening day, and I had to wait like five, so I guess you were smarter. And it was intolerable, because by the time you got it, I had finished, and it's like, I yeah. need to talk to somebody about it. There's nothing on here. So I had to go online and look at other podcasts and stuff. Um, so we're going to go through some general thoughts first. I'm going to go through all of the, I guess, criteria of the game, what we liked and didn't like. And then after that, we're going to go into story beats and just go full hog. But just so you listeners know right now, this is going to be a spoiler cast. Nothing is off the limits, you know, starting right now. So if you haven't beat it yet or you don't want to hear anything at all, there's your warning. (laughs) Uh, So first, let's uh, talk about the combat because that's probably the biggest change from the original game. From the turn-based? Going from turn-based to action. Uh, So how did you think about that? How did you feel about not having a one-to-one remake in terms of the combat? Uh, That was fine for me. Um, You know, I think it's been so long since we've had a traditional turn-based Final Fantasy that I guess I didn't really notice that much of a difference. And they kind of tried to add a little bit of a turn base with that ATB meter. Yeah, it's still but... kind of there. Uh, yep. spe- speaking of, so the two of us like Kingdom Hearts quite a bit, so it kind of felt at home with what we're yep. used to. Did you use the quick menu at all? You know, um, I completely missed that until I was doing one of the last fights in the game and I was trying to set some stuff up and I'm like, oh, right, there was a quick menu. You know, it's so really no. <laughs> not as good. Like, Kingdom Hearts, you have to use it. Between... I always used it in Kingdom Hearts. And, yeah, I, I was on Chapter 17, I think, when I uh, started using the quick um, meter, and I didn't use it that much. It just was just as easy to go into the menu. It paused the game, more or less, and you could take your time and pick what you needed to do. Yeah, it kind of operated like Vats in Fallout 3, where everything slowed mm-hmm. down. And I actually preferred that because it looked cooler kind of uh, in the middle of things. Kind of would be nice if this game had a photo mode so you could do that, which... Well, I wouldn't have photo mode. (laughs) I'm (laughs) I'm amazed by the number of games that don't have photo mode. Yeah, today. But, I mean, that's kind of one of those things where you do a patch later, like, hey, go back to the game. There's a photo mode now. And, like, (laughs) kind of would have been nice to take all these photos while I went through. When I was playing it, yeah. Yeah. But I took, I mean, uh, for all of my content for the Gamer and Game Rant, I must have taken like 300 oh, photos, I, I think, <laughs> just just to make sure I get all this stuff. And then, you know, took some videos as well uh, to just in case I just can't see things. So I took screenshots of like video too, like especially after like the final part where they block, uh, block capture. Which that. I thought was interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, you know, it's like the end. So, okay, you can uh, show everything up to this point, which is kind of like, yeah, people are going to and not it anyway. to get into story elements, but that's kind of where the game deviates from the original. So yeah, it, I, it's understandable why they cut it off. But but I wonder if they'll unlock that at some point. It's hard to say. Um, so going back to combat, um, <laughs> just like so, in the original, you have a party, but this time yeah. they're all more individual, more or less. Every single person was the exact same in the first game because what differentiated them was like the limit breaks, but otherwise material just kind of made them all, Mm -hmm. you know, the same, I guess Aerith had more healing stuff, but that's pretty much it. Uh, This time they they actually all felt different. Yeah, they did. Was there anyone that you gravitated towards? 
I use cloud mostly. Um, Barrett and Aerith, depending on who was in my party, were usually my healer. But um, Barrett had some good dis like damage attacks. So I would switch over to him. But I mainly played as Cloud. But the game really did, you know, want you to jump back and forth between characters. Because unless you had Materia that boosted it, their meters filled really slowly. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's kind of like uh, performing all the ATB gauges. Like, okay, this person has the ATB gauge. I'll jump over to this person and use his yep. ATB gauge. And then, you know, back and forth. So it is yeah. kind of like the so I, base menu in that sense. Yep. I found myself mainly using Cloud... And then when somebody's gauge filled, I would just flip over to them in the menu and issue the command and then go back to cloud. But if I really wanted to use a certain move of theirs, I would jump over to them and get in some attacks to fill up their ATB gauge and then go back to cloud after I'd done the attack. It kind of would have been nice if there was some kind of AI system that you could program, like in Kingdom Hearts, where you could say... Go all in attack, focus on magic, focus on yes. healing, kind of thing. And I was really or surprised something that like wasn't the license that. board from Twelve or something like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly, gambit stuff. Um, but yeah. for the most part, I, I really thought there'd was... be something like heal at at least like prioritize healing at twenty five percent or something. Yeah, but for the most part, I thought everyone was pretty smart in battle. I didn't really have yep. that much trouble. My one issue would be with Barrett. He's a range guy, and I'd look over, and he's, like, right in people's faces. And I was, <laughs> yeah, I okay. Well, you got that point-blank stuff. <laughs> yeah, you do, but... Um, and then there was the one weapon that I didn't realize didn't fire bullets. Yes. So, of course, he'd be up in their face for that. But otherwise, even when he had a gun with bullets, I'd be like, would you stand back and stop taking all the hits? Well, that's one thing where Barrett's won't only range until you get that one weapon, and then it's like, oh, no all of my characters are melee now and I can't switch out weapons. It would have been nice to switch out weapons, but mm -hmm. for some reason... At least the game was very forgiving though with, like, you could restart a battle pretty easily. Yeah. Also, if you had, like, one of his special abilities, he'll just automatically use it like it it was a, a ranged yep. gun, even though that doesn't make any sense, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. I didn't use that weapon very much. Um, So I, 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 of course, use Cloud a lot just because, you know, it's Cloud... It's um, cloud and I, I main like, character. I like Tiff a lot too because of how fast mm -hmm. and agile I was. I gravitated towards. And she could really stagger an enemy. Yeah, uh, Baron was kind of weird at first because he didn't really have much. But once you got more of his weapons and his skills, I once tend... you got that, I can't remember. Was it maximum fury? Uh, yes. Yeah. But that was that was like his bread and butter for me. That was great. I really didn't like Aerith's kind of weird distance dance kind of move. I didn't like her dodge. Yeah, it was it was it was weird. I I remember. I hope this isn't getting into too much of story bits, but you do that um, Genova boss battle, and I used her for the most part because she could keep away and wouldn't get the the counter attack that it would do for a physical attack. And she's just doing this little pirouette dodge the whole fight, and it just <laughs> kind of didn't take me out of the moment. But it was a little bit like okay. <laughs> I. Yeah, it's not like I, I hated her, but I was kind of wishing that there would be two different uh, stances for her. Like, maybe she could do melee with the uh, the pole, the rod. Just, yeah. And then also have, like, her magic stuff. But, um, yep. you know, whatever. Um, yeah. I, I didn't dislike any of the characters. It wasn't, you know, since they set your party for you, there was never, like, oh, this person. Yeah. Um, I never felt like I wasn't prepared for an area based on the characters they gave me. How'd you feel about Materia? For the most part, it, it acted the exact same way as it was in the other games. It was exact same. I'm not as familiar with all the Materia. Um, I was surprised. I only found one, and it's not called All anymore. What did they call it in this game? Magnify or whatever? Yeah. And it's been a while, but in the first game, like it just cast... There was... There's no All Materia where you could like cast Cure on everybody or... Well, you could lightning there was the magnify materia that you could attach a cure or an elemental materia to and it does do help but everybody? i mean yep oh but it was like very weak you could level it up i think to oh was it 50 percent strength or something might uh, it might be a little higher than that i don't remember what the max level three of it was i feel like i got that materia but i guess i'd never noticed that it actually did that. It, it was and it was weird because you could 
turn it on or off in the menu. Maybe so that's... like you could you could attach it, and then it was like when you go to like cast it, you could turn hit L one and it would like turn it on or off. Oh no! I wrote so many articles that said that. <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of all the material, there's only two that's missing. There's cover. Which was kind of replaced by Barrett's. Um, I can't remember what that move is called, but it's a special where he takes damage for everybody else. Oh, yes. And then heals them. Uh, and they then... also had. I never used it, but they had Provoke, which I kind of thought did the same thing as Cover, but I didn't really use it. Where you wouldn't so much take the blow for them, but you would yeah, encourage you... enemies to attack yeah. you instead. Yeah. For... Most of the material is kind of new, a lot of the blue stuff is. Um, yeah. The greens. Uh, there was no wind in the original. The only wind type attack you could get through is enemy skill, and uh, I kind of I was surprised when that actually showed up way late in the game. And then there's like four enemy skills you can get. <laughs> yeah. Um, but maybe they'll expand on that in in future. I was a little bummed with games. steel that you couldn't use mug because I preferred that rather than just like you know not doing any damage at all. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of differences. Uh, what do you think about the summons? Speaking of uh, differences to materia, this time instead of yeah. just using a special, they actually came to aid you, and then you could, you know, boost up. Fight their... with them. Yeah. I I thought they were fine. I found I would summon them, and I mean they still would do their own attacks, but I was so focused on doing my own attacks that I would never use my ATB gauge to do their attacks. Really. Yeah. Same for me too. Or if I if they randomly decided to summon out. I never got to use their like final special basically. Mm -hmm. And I never really used the limit breaks that much either because it just took so long to get and like between battles I... it never carried over. So So I played on normal and I used many limit breaks. Mainly Cloud and Tifa would fill up for me. Uh Barrett not so much and and Aerith once in a while, but And but... I thought it was interesting that there was um you could level up their limit breaks, so that was kind of cool. They ha everybody had at least two limit breaks. Yeah, it definitely but... not as uh, useful as it was in the original. But the thing that they replaced it with is, um, you know, giving your characters actual skills instead of just mm -hmm. having the like the weapon skills be on yeah. limit breaks. And I like that you could learn them and have them permanently. Yeah, and it really helps out that a lot of materia and skills were not uh, MP based because. MP is very important in the uh, hard playthrough, as you can't yeah. use uh, items, which is items. like... And and benches don't restore your MP. Yeah, it should be... That's not even, that's not even hard. That's like uh, that's like next it's... level hard. I stuck, the stuck to the game on normal because I thought, well, maybe I'll try and go for the platinum. And I still might, but oh my god, normal was so hard sometimes. <laughs> and in I hard... mean, it was a good challenge, but there were... It was hard. In hard, they actually, like, bosses actually get more tactics. They actually have new moves that you will not see unless you play the hard mode. Like the Scorpion yeah. boss, like, well, you know how you jump through the barriers? Well, yes. those those kind of get destroyed or, like, there's a way where they can just, like, shoot right through the barriers. So it's, yeah, it's uh, it's intense. So I didn't finish it on hard yet, but it's uh, it's intense to be, to be yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I will give it a try. I figured I was going to... I, I did switch it to easy after I finished the game just to go and get the um, last two side quests in Chapter 9 because they have those two exclusive side quests. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I realize I'm back a few chapters, but this is much different. <laughs> um, uh, that, that's another thing. When you beat the game, more games should do this. Like Some games have New Game Plus where it lets you take your stuff and go through the whole game again. This game does that, but also lets you go to certain chapters if you just want to revisit that again, which I think was just like a, a great way to do that. I wish that happens. That for... is very cool. I do wish there were ways to just go back to certain areas without having to replay the chapter up to that point. Yeah, chapters. Like, I'd chapters. like to go back to the Coliseum or the um, the uh, VR lab in, in the Shinra building. Yeah, yeah. Without having to play up to that, but... I guess with those cases, too, you can put it on easy, plow through, and then change the game to whatever you wanted for for that section if you wanted to do the Coliseum or Right, you can skip the story stuff, too, so it's not like it's mm -hmm. impossible, but uh, no. it, it but does take there a just, while. There are just certain sections. This game loved to make you slow down and walk, and I'm sure that was probably to hide loading times. Oh, yeah, but... those wall huggings, they love those wall huggings. <laughs> 
there it's just you know you just be walking and it's like i want to run why why can't i run and i i don't know if i would prefer it but sometimes it's like i'd rather just be an obvious loading screen what do you think about the um limitations on the level capping at 50 um I thought that was kind of interesting. I guess my thoughts on that will change depending on what they do for game two. Like, are you going to care? I can't imagine that you're going to, they're going to let you carry over a level 50 character into yeah, there. Cause level 50 will just be level one anyway, just for the yeah. fact that I'm sure if you didn't play the first one, it'll be like, well, we'll start you at level 50, which is just level one because of how the game will balance. It's just a different whatever. number. Yeah. Um, kind of weird, especially if you're playing on hard mode, because when I finished the game, I was on, I think level 38 or 39 throughout the most. So that just meant I only had 11 more levels to go. Yeah, I think I think most of mine ended in like 40. And they what? Like they double your experience? In yeah. The next play through? I, so I, it's like, well, I don't have that much to go. So that just, that thing feels a little moot, basically. Mm -hmm. It is nice for the AP tripling because you can, you know, you level up as your material. much AP as, you know, as you want. Same with yeah, like which... weapons is... Again, Another. is that just to help you through hard mode, or is any of that going to carry over? I, again, it's like, oh, I'm just kind of wondering how they're going to take everything away from you in the next game. And I have some ideas, but I guess it's like a lot of sequels where you've spent the whole first game powering up, and then you start the the next game over at nothing. Oh yeah, I mean, we'll, I don't know if you... we'll definitely get into that. Um, anything else with the combat that you want to touch on? Uh, no. Like, overall, I thought it was fun. Um, I thought it was a good challenge on normal, so it'll be interesting to play it on, on hard. But, um, I thought some of the last fights were a little drawn out, but not necessarily hard. They just kind of went on a little long. Um, uh, well, in particular, in, the, like, the Shinra building, they, like, kind of throw a lot of boss battles. It was just, you once bit. you get to the top floor, it was just... The rest of the game was just boss battles. Yeah. <laughs> Chapter 18 is is just boss battles. Which is kind of like, you know, how the but other that, other game was, too. That one, but, uh... that one fight that Barrett and Aerith did, that one is cheap. Because it takes, it's got a lot of health, it's got a lot of resistance, it takes a while to oh, the whittle it down. Thing. Yeah, and then if you don't finish it off at the end in a certain amount of time, you just get to start over. There's just, it's got an insta kill. Yeah, that's that's kind of cheap, but yeah, I uh, I'll get to it later for story like standout moments and stuff like that. But in general, I thought that there was some pacing uh, trouble. Yes, uh, I'll I'll get into it more a little bit later. Yes, here. I agree. Uh, but yeah, pacing let's get into... and filler. <laughs> yes, filler definitely. Um, <laughs> let's get into the graphics real quick, which kind of goes into combat because I just thought that. You know, watching combat was just really cool because of how great everything looked. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I thought it looked really good, like a really graphics nice... Graphics were amazing, unless you were a side character giving a side quest. That's my then, notes. Then your face looked like you were melting. That's my main notes here. It's like main characters look amazing, the... especially eyes, but the NPCs, not so much. The, the Don Corneo side quest characters looked fine. But, like, some of the people in, like, chapters three and five, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, you'd have, like, Cloud or any of the other characters standing next to them. And it's like, these don't look like they're in the same game. Well, there's also, like, all the blurry textures. Like, some of the posters mm -hmm. look good, and sometimes they look like they got slapped in from the PS1. Like, all the main characters looked amazing. Creatures, the too. Facial Creatures anim look great. Yes, Facial animations were good. The eyes, like you already commented on, were were great. They kind of had to because they kept on talking about Cloud's eyes. Like, oh, there's the Mako. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had to actually like making it like, oh crap, how do we how do we do this? How do we live up to it? Yeah, exactly. Um, also, <laughs> there's a lot of good environments, but there's also a lot of times where stuff in the far distance, like that, doesn't look that good. <laughs> The worst, yeah. I think, is when you're climbing up to the Shinra Tower on the plate and you look off into the distance, it looks like you're just looking at like a JPEG they found. JPEG, up. yes. And I was like, wow, that looks so and it's, bad. They, you know, I don't know if it's fine, but it would have been fine. But then they, they kept having moments where they'd go over and like look over it. And it's like, 
Stop drawing attention to it. Look how pretty it is. Like, I don't know. It, you, like, blew up but, this. Yeah. There's a lot of games that use, like, draw distances that, you know, look good. But this was literally like, it just seemed like they threw up an image there, which was, you know, kind of kind And of I know other games have this problem, but at least in recent memory, this was one of the more jarring games between these characters look amazing and these characters look like plastic things that have been left out in the sun too long. Yeah. Um, did you have any problems with glitches or anything like that? I... No, I don't think I had any glitches. I think the only thing that you could call a glitch is like some blurry textures not loading in properly, but for the most oh, part, yeah. it, it, that's it. Yeah, I, I had some I had some texture pop late and stuff, but I didn't... Which is crazy. I didn't have any glitches. I didn't have... There was no, like, clipping into walls or anything like that. No, and for the most part, like, the weapons didn't do, like, that weird hair thing. It was like, well, it's going through the hair, you know, kind of takes you mm -hmm. on. It, everything looked great. Uh, Cloud's guess... hair looked like... He had, like, all the shorter hair down by his neck, and I'm like, wow, that looks really real. <laughs> so <detailed. laughs> It was just a little detail that I noticed. Um, I guess that's really it for graphics. It's not, you know, not that much to uh, really... It, it was, yeah, it was either really good or really underwhelming, but where it mattered, it was really good. And this kind of should go with the combat, but moving on to music, like, that combat would not be as great as it is if not for, like, the dynamic music uh, oh, in the game. Oh, the music. I don't Going, know. That that part you're playing in Chapter 2 and you meet Aerith and her song, her theme kicks on, like, took me back to, like, when I was in high school playing this game for the first time. <laughs> not even high school. I was in junior high. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, I... I thought, it was a real nostalgia blast. I don't know why they didn't uh, sell the CD right away. Like, it, it's weird how Square Enix is doing that. They released, like, the mini soundtrack with that special edition, which is not all the tracks, but some mm -hmm. later things, but not all. Of the, it, it's kind of weird how they did that. And then they released, like, a vinyl, which has pretty much most of the mini soundtrack plus the original soundtrack, which is weird, but still missing so many things like in between uh if i could choose two that like got me pumped up uh first of all in the the final fight with jenova uh dreamweaver which i mean did you think of that song <laughs> that oh, name all the was? time i kept <laughs> i kept uh humming at the whole fight because it was another long one <laughs> um, fighting those tentacles <laughs> but uh at first i'm like i don't like what they did with jenova's theme but then like the classic one came in after like halfway through i'm like okay now there were so many real. good moments like that where they would like kind of start off with their new version and then it just would turn into the the classic version it was just it was a good mix and then right after that with the motorcycle chase was like oh man adrenaline is like through the roof right now let's go this is the end i am ready baby and i was relieved yeah. too because i thought the motorcycle chase was changed from the first one you do and like well, i'm not really mm -hmm. digging this one as much it doesn't even sound that much the same uh, and then you get to the real one. It's like, oh, great. Uh, they did a really good job of, like, weaving themes together. Like, when you fight the yes. Turks on the, the tower, they do a good job of doing the Turks theme meshed with, like, the battle theme. And, like, one other theme in there, too. It's like, oh, my. How are they doing all this stuff? It's just, mm -hmm. like, amazing. It's just, the like, music it's a dynamic was... sound. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess, I don't know if this would, if you're planning talking about it, but along with the music the voice acting was all really good yeah there's no one that i thought did like a poor job of and i think i texted I mean, you both maybe this. some of the side characters again but like all the main cast was yeah i don't say side characters is more like the lip syncing was kind of weird um and then yeah. maybe like reusing some voices but for the most part they still sounded okay i think i texted you about this how like even the children mostly sounded good mm -hmm. like because mostly yeah it could be marlene was pretty good i think actually yeah we did talk about it because you brought up uh mm -hmm. heavy rain because that's some of the worst child acting. Oh, it did. <laughs> I mean, you can't do any worse than Heavy Rain. So. Uh, and yeah. I remember asking you if Marlene was as cute as Nanako, because you said she was pretty cute. And she was pretty cute. I, I don't know if she was as cute, but she was pretty cute. Yes. Uh, yeah, they, they look very, very similar, too. They do. Like the, the dresses. She's just, just not singing about, you know, like... Uh, Junez. Junez. She's not singing about Wall Market. Everything's great at <laughs> Wall Market. Someone, oh, I saw should... a joke online that... I didn't put this together about Wall Markets, the Walmart of the future. And I was like, I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're dystopian thing there. Uh, yeah, I was kind of afraid because um, 
I remember liking the cast from like uh, Kingdom Hearts for the Final Fantasy Seven characters that made it into there, and you know Advent Children, and then mm-hmm. I, for a related articles, I rewatched Advent Children, and I was like, okay, they sound okay, but the direction is so off. They just sound so moody and just distant and just morose. I'm like. Ooh. That's it had been a while since I've seen Advent Children, but I was glad they added a little bit more personality and I don't know if I want to say humor, but I guess humor to Cloud. Oh no, he was this this super game emo is hilarious. This uh, this is this is a good Cloud. There's some like he's still got the angsty side to him, but yeah, and I think he, he's real. Kind of sucked at first because the, it's starting out. Like, I wasn't, like, into Barrett. He was just kind of, like, gruff and, like, whatever. But then you see, like, the weirder, softer sides of him. He's, like, a really fun, goofy dad, kind of. Uh, <laughs> the more you get into the game, like, when he sings the uh, the victory song. The or battle song, yeah. On the Sector 5 plays, like, let's go look for some treasure. I was like, what the heck is going on here? This yeah. was really weird. Uh, I loved it. Uh, same yeah, with no, Aerith, too. Was... Uh, Oliver, like real like murderous in intense moments like wow this is a it's a weird character because everyone just kind of thinks that she's like this weird like princess good kind of character but if you play the original she does say weird lines like that like i'll rip them off (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'll be watching for that i just like i was saying restarted final fantasy 7 original so because it's been probably 10 years since i've played that um other just humorous moments i loved when cloud is talking to tiffa and he's dressed weird and then he interrupts tiffa and says okay i know i look great but let's get off of that or something I, I know, like that. yes that was that line delivery was perfect <laughs> <laughs> nailed it i know let's move on <laughs> yeah it's like wow it's like I you just, go you be confident yeah it's it's always been a weird thing in the games it's uh it is different than what it was in the original game where you actually did a side quest to get directly like what you will be wearing and so in this game it's just uh you put on a dress sphere apparently and then you change into a, a girl on stage which i don't know about you <laughs> what, but it doesn't what, look like a girl i don't know how someone gets fooled but you know whatever <laughs> what dress did you get i got the one that looks like the original it's like just a purple the blue and black oh okay uh what color is the dress yeah (laughs) i got golden uh... i'm going back a couple years (laughs) uh yeah there's a there's a lot more choices for like the other girls dresses because in the original Mm -hmm. tiff and Aerith were always the same now they gave some more choices with that too um yeah trophy for getting all nine dresses oh god that's so many (laughs) but i mean if you replay the the same thing over and over again it's you know okay i guess but and i guess with chapter select i think you only need to play like what chapter three, chapter five again? Yeah, and when you're you in can the skip. room with Tiffa, and then something it's, else later. But side, I think it's dependent on how many side quests you do in chapter five. Uh, I also loved Rude, Prayer. like fighting Rude, and then him just taking out the extra pair of glasses. That was <laughs> he had so. Yeah. I love that that gag like continued throughout the game. He yeah. just kept putting on it was, sunglasses. It was great, and they were like good characters too, and they kind of delved a little bit more into, i always uh, really like the turks so i was glad to see them a little bit more well, here's the thing i remember liking them too from like advent children because they actually did some more stuff with them <laughs> but in advent children oh my god they couldn't be less cool if they tried they were like the three stooges they did not do anything they kept on goofing up and i'm like okay they're the comedy relief and they took the gag uh. of the glasses from that movie but they did it a better way where they are more competent <laughs> but still yeah. funny at the same time. But yeah, they were cool. Though I still, the game didn't answer some stuff about them, but yeah, just like how they know where Aerith is, they want Aerith, but they never take her, and they threw in like some weird line, like, well, she has to come willingly, and it's like, Isn't why? that in some movie or show where it's like, well, it has to be willingly or something like that in order to make it work? Do you know what I mean, it could... When they said that, I'm like, that has to be from something. I I forgot to look it up, and I can't remember what it is. But that just seems like one of those things. Yeah, uh, that was definitely. I'm like, well, that is the the weirdest like plot contrivance. But okay. Yeah, I don't know why they keep on like. I must say yes, 
okay, she unlocked it. Then, like, you know, some weird <laughs> national treasure thing opens up. <laughs> some conspiracy. Uh, other stand moments here, as long as we're getting into some story stuff with the characters. Uh, the Honeybee in sequence in general of just the, oh the dancing was the real dancing. fun. I don't know how Cloud great. learned those dance moves. I, but, I don't uh, know, yeah. Nothing in his character suggests that he would know how to do that, but I'm glad he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, real crazy. I also like the uh, the stadium. Um, the only way you can do that is in Gold Saucer in the original game. And it's... Right. I, like it. I didn't really like it that much in the Gold Saucer because you had to like keep on playing to keep those points. And if you left... That's it. You lost. This That's one, right. They were like a lot more bite sized, and you got mm -hmm. prizes. So I I liked it a little bit better. And they were good prizes. I mean, that's how you got the limit breaks and. Yeah. Uh, uh, Shinra Museum. Um, that was a nice little touch to go through some of those things. Uh, yeah. Like, did you uh get like a Pokemon badge, vibe when they showed all of the characters like for that one promo <laughs> video and they all had the like gym leaders. Yeah, they all had little badges. <laughs> And they also had, like, um, for Heidegger, however you say his name. I don't know if you know if they say it in the, in the game. But I always guy, said Heidegger. They, they show, like, some soldiers moving around, like, a tactics thing. And then for Reeve, they show, like, a bunch of hearts over Shinra, or not Shinra, uh, Midgar people. I'm like, is that, like, a Sims mobile spinoff and, like, a tactics mobile spinoff? I think those are, like, two, like, little hints that we're going to be getting later on. Otherwise, it was just like a weird thing to throw into that promo video. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. uh, speaking of, um, so I know you said this was a spoiler cast. Are we going into spoilers that maybe weren't covered in this game, but would have been in the original? Yes, this is the entire okay. compilation of Final Fantasy okay. VII. I will be talking about Before Crisis yeah, towards the end here when we talk about sequel predictions. So, speaking of Reeve then, it's cool to have that little, like, Kate Sith uh, cameo. Okay. When the plate fell. Right. But his Kate Sith has never ever made sense to me. It's a robot no. that Reeve pilots. So when, <laughs> think I I listened to this in podcast, and maybe some of these theories will I've read online, so all these are not original, but okay, hear me out. Uh okay. so Sector 7 goes down. Reeve gets in the robot, goes out to look at it real quickly and and then what like i don't understand why that shot was like in there in the first place <laughs> it was in there to be like hey look it's kate Seth. also like to have the robot have emotions like having the thing have emotions you know is it like a vr thing like that's one of the things that they could <laughs> yeah that's what i was like was that reeve like being like oh no or was that yeah there was no vr <laughs> in the original game to my recollection unless there was some I, actually i guess they could uh, the the art um uh, Gold Saucer, the games you play technically could have been like said VR, but VR it wasn't yeah. as integrated. So they could say that VR is how Reeve controls uh, Kate Sith in this one, or Kate She, however they want you to say it. Um, but then, like, I mean, is he just going into a closet in the Shinra building? And how is no one? They don't. How has no one noticed? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of I mean, he's things... obviously like on a list. I didn't seem to have many fans among the board, so you <laughs> yeah. think they'd yeah. be watching him? He was on a list for sure. <laughs> uh, also on the list, um, what happened with Rufus's coat? Like, did you get like a paper shredded vibe with that thing? Because I was, was like just... belts all over the place. I was place. like, that is so anime. It would have, it was fine, but I'm like, it would have looked just as good if it was just a white coat. Some with characters went like really full Nomura in dapper... this game. Dapper. Really dapper purple collar. Yeah. Um, that was also but cool. But yeah, play. that that coat was... That was... Uh, I, I had a little trouble with that at first, that fight. But it was a good one. Kind of a weird thing where it showed, like, the, the line going to his, like, attack dog, which is, like, very Final Fantasy 12. I had trouble with the lock-on in that fight and getting it to attack Duskstar and not Rufus. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Kate Sith... Um... Any any other like standout moments before we get to like the very oh gosh uh, like motorcycle I... thing stuff beyond like before that any like standout moments before that before the before the end yeah. um I mean there are s almost all the cutscenes were were really good um the whole plate section was a good 
kind of emotional cutscene. Uh, for Sector Seven. Uh, yeah, for Sector Seven. Yeah, like that when was. It crashed they and... did a lot better job of like uh, having like urgency in that. Urgency, and they had done a better job of you know letting you get to know Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse so that you actually cared more about them. They were I mean, not in the first game, in the original game. Really. Yeah, it was like they were like, you know, Bear was getting all upset in the first game, and it's like, I mean, yeah, they're dead. That's sad, but I, I don't know who they were. Moving on. Yeah, uh, that's, I'm glad you brought up Avalanche because, I mean, to me, I think of all, like, all the new characters and stuff, I think Jesse, like, was a real big stand-up for me. And, yeah, uh, I like Biggs, too, but I might have been, he was voiced by Gideon Emery, who I like a lot of his characters that he does, so. <laughs> but Biggs didn't really have that many moments other than, like, tying himself to, like, the orphanage. I feel like they just threw them in there, like, oh, yeah, he has a backstory, too. And, oh, yeah, Wedge <laughs> yeah, he's, likes he's... cats. I'm so glad they didn't kill that cat. <laughs> but um, yeah, they were good. But speaking of Avalanche, this game, I, I definitely was hit more with the fact of you guys are terrorists. Like, there's no beating around the bush. You're you're environmental terrorists. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that first mission where they, they plan to blow up this thing, but they don't think it's going to hurt anybody. We They never really go it, into it, but it's really hinted that uh, Shinra meddled with it to make it explode more. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, that's definitely what happened. But still, you put a bomb on a reactor, and granted, I don't know the properties of Mako, but you put a bomb on a reactor. I feel like there shouldn't be that much like a, huh, well, there's a lot of damage that happened. I feel, I must have did a bad job putting that bomb together. It's like, no, it's a bomb. (laughs) Like, Shinra, Shinra definitely meddled. Maybe Mako's not combustible. I don't know. But, um... They, they are environmental terrorists. They are like the people that are going, no, we can't have electricity or coal mining or any of that stuff because the planet. I heard this in a podcast too of when you get into, what's the sector that you get into after you like you finish the, the bombing and then you get into that one sector where you got to go through all like the destruction. Oh, destruction. Yeah. Or whatever. That the, the was... beginning sequence. And everyone's like, I guess it must have been five. Gosh, I, I wonder who did all this stuff. And you have it like this giant, big, huge dude with a gun arm and a giant guy. Like, look at those anime was... characters. They're the ones responsible. Like, who else That was the be? same with, let's sneak into the Shinra building. And, like, there's all these just regular employees there. And you're running around with a gun on your arm and a giant sword on your back. Why didn't they have, like, masks? Like, I can't believe they know who we are. Well, of course. And they also would just talk about it everywhere in front of people. It's like, yeah. Lower your voices. This is a secret that everybody yeah, knows. So, so that that was something that older me. I mean, I still was rooting for them, but I'm like, you guys are terrorists, and you know, maybe it was something too. Just in the area where we are, you know, mining's a big part of it, and everything. And it's there. There's a bit of controversy, I guess, for us in in the real world with, you know, progress for for electricity and heating and and you know that kind of stuff versus the environment can you imagine if lake country power had like all these weird divisions of like military stuff it's so weird that shinro is like electrical company and has like all somebody these, like, global came ties. in when i was i was doing the boss battle for the second motorcycle part and they were asking like oh you know who's they're not familiar with the game who sent that after you i'm like this is like if uh our electrical company said kill robots after us oh okay that could ha- happen in the future. You never know. You never know. Sending out drones to, hey, instead of just shutting off your power, we're going to send out a drone to just shoot you because, you know, <laughs> like, we'll make sure this never happens again. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's definitely a lot of things that, that don't make sense in the game, but it's just kind of one of those, you know, those disbelief things. We're going to just put in the back of my mind, like, okay, whatever. <laughs> this is the game about magic and stuff like that. So I guess. Yeah. It's a game whatever. where, like, they're not superheroes. I guess I realize Cloud's a genetically engineered and he's in Soldier, but they're still just people. But boy, they do some crazy stuff at the end. I mean, Barrett is just like a huge man. Like, I don't know how he got to be like... And I realize the Tifa's super drink. strong. And I mean, that stupid pull-up challenge, I hated it. But she can do all the pull-ups. But still, like, all the time she was like catching like Cloud and Barrett. <laughs> it was just like... Your arms are like out of your socket by this oh, point. Oh yeah, especially when she saves Cloud at the very end with uh, from like Rufus falling off the building. Yes. 
All right. Uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of power in her upper body. You know, that's where yeah. all her muscles. Well, I mean, she did do all those pull-ups. <laughs> yeah. I hated those challenges. I was. I hated that. I they were, and it's like there's. I I did I maxed them out, but they were bad. Um. Especially the uh, the fact that the menu went away. Like there wasn't just always up, so yeah, you could keep the time, and you had to. It's like ah. Uh, those prizes don't look that great. <laughs> <laughs> but the trophy, man, the trophies. <laughs> yeah, the trophies. All right, well, we're dancing around this a lot, so let's um, let's get into it. And I don't think we can really talk about the ending without first talking about our feelings on the whispers. Uh, you mean to the me, <laughs> Yeah. To me, I yeah, we just made jokes like those are straight up dementors. Like, what are they doing that first time? And they show up with Aerith. I'm like, why are they there? Like, I don't understand why this had to be added. And the more and more times they kept on showing up to like interrupt, and I'm like, why are they there? I just don't understand. <laughs> and it's not until like the very end where you kind of see like maybe they're a metaphor for fans making sure that the oh, game yeah. is actually a remake and sticks to the original script. Or here's a theory that I. I I I feel from what I've you know looked into that it seems maybe obvious, but like the Sephiroth in this game, people think that it's the Sephiroth from Advent Children who has gone back in time now, with the knowledge back he's learned time. from that game or movie timeline okay. whatever, gone back in time to change things basically. And then the whispers are the planetary like defenses to keep things on track as they should be. Yeah, but there also seems to be like some whispers that are working with them. If you watch the Little game, rogue. the whispers aren't technically called out in the game, but when the two of them are fighting at the very end, there are some whisper-like things there. So I don't know if that was just like a cool effect, and then they decided to mm -hmm. make it into something you know later or what, but. Uh, when, yeah. When they started hearing it was, people, it was kind of like, okay, what are what are we yeah. doing here? And it was never clear. Like at first, nobody could see them, and then they attacked Sector Three. So could everybody see them? It was yeah. It didn't really make the sense. rules weren't very clear on them, and I think I mean even you, by the end, their explanation is still pretty. If you vague. think about it, I thought about those things too, like how maybe they don't make sense because at first Aerith and then Aerith touches Cloud and then he can see them. He can mm -hmm. see them. I think if you think about it, um, it's not that many things are different in the beginning. And the more and more Sephiroth metals, the more whispers that the planet has to create. So thus, there's more of like a cloud of like people have to see this because there's like so many that you can't. Many, you know, yeah. They become more visible. You can't ignore of, them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it it was like Aerith at times seemed to not be surprised by them and, and understand them. And on the other times she was confu like confused and know what they were. There and... are a couple theories regarding like if Aerith uh, is also a time traveler or if she just yeah, had like, visions I, or something. I got that feeling, but then I was like, well, maybe it's because she's an ancient or I something feel, like that. But I feel that it's the planet telling her things because she's connected because she's to so connected yeah the planet knows all the things that are ever going to happen in like multiple realities and so that's why there's like flashbacks to like the original game and stuff and she's just getting like yeah. flash forwards in time especially because if Sephiroth is which was weird back, that cloud started to get those kind of flash back slash forwards to the original game yeah i feel like maybe that might be a part of the connection with Aerith, perhaps uh, I don't think it would make sense if they're reliving their lives again, that everything has happened before. I think it's just maybe like yeah. there's some kind of branch lineage, or maybe it's the fact that fate is supposed to be like like the original game, and that's mm -hmm. what the planet is showing see if what there's... it's supposed to be. Yeah, I mean, there's some, like if you said, if it's Sephiroth coming back in time or whatever, something's meddled with and that's how why things are things... supposed to be. Go ahead. Oh, I just was good changing how things were supposed to be yeah that's why people have said like why things are different like the very first thing that you can say like oh this is very different besides like you know some filler stuff 
is like Wedge surviving. Like when Wedge Wedge yes. does fall off the tower and then Aerith tends to him, but he's never shown again. It's kind of implied that he also died because of the fact that, you know, the the crash happened and, you know, no one mm-hmm. got him out or whatever. But uh, him surviving a little bit was a little bit yeah. different. <laughs> and then it kind of goes back to being kind of ambiguous what happens to Wedge. Yeah, and then he comes back in the tower. I'm like, okay, that's very different. And then, yeah, it is ambiguous that maybe he got taken out. But then now we see... Because it was like, we've never really seen the Whispers. Like, we fought them, but we've never seen them kill anybody, did we? No, not really. Just, like, blocking. So, but then, like, he... I don't remember what he said, but he had that, like, last thought of, like, I hope I did some good or something, which sounded very, like, final thoughts to me. So it was like, did they kill him? Did they they push him out the building? Then they're not dead. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's nobody not dead yeah same but thing. it did sound like there was glass breaking it's like so did he die from falling off the tower like he should have died from falling off a tower i i don't know yeah you will die but you have to die exactly the way you did um but people have thought that um because sephiroth is meddling so much from a different time period the whispers focus on the things that he's doing and then miss things that they're supposed to do like killing wedge or killing biggs and maybe even killing jesse and because they're like dealing with all of your stuff at the very end or you know the main party stuff they were you know they couldn't tend to like finishing up biggs mm-hmm. in terms of fate but but i have thoughts about the biggs being shown alive too so and i don't know if we want to get into that now or when we talk about kind of their other big change at the end uh i i know what you're talking about and let's get to that a little bit later okay um i do say if biggs is alive then everyone else should be alive as well because i kind of look like jesse's gloves might have been there but mm-hmm. um okay and then we'll circle back to biggs after yeah, then. We'll circle back um but yeah let's just get into like basically the final battle which I gave you hints that this game goes, besides uh, Rufus's coat being very nomura esque <laughs> this game is it's, very Kingdom Hearts in that very final it's battle. It's pretty on point all the way till chapter 18, and then, like, chapter 18 takes, like, a 90-degree turn. Yeah, like you said, there's, like, filler stuff or, like, some small stuff that's yeah, changed, there's... but at the very end, it's like, no, we're gonna basically go into this portal and I don't know what's gonna happen, guys, and we might not come out the same. Just very hinting, like, yeah. Okay, this is us super changing the timeline now, so let's do this. Like, okay, sure, whatever. Like, I, yeah. it'd be funny if there was like a choice to say like, nah, nah, <laughs> <laughs> bye. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna go sit on that bench that's back there and wait it out. God, that shadow form of like the calamity or whatever the heck it's called. Like, that's just that. What was har- it? That harbinger. Carlos- yeah, like the harbinger of calamity or something along those lines and then those little mini ones the the red blue and yellow ones people have thought those are uh kadaj laj and yazoo from advent children like in a different Mm. form that uh sephiroth brought back as well because of like the weapons they use and like their uh, movements and stuff uh people are kind of torn between and being that or being like different versions of tifa cloud and barrett but like the way the weapons are is a little bit different than those guys so that's what they think it might be, Kadaj, Laz, and Yazoo. So at least they didn't like actually in the game, and we're talking about their mother so much because mother they sucked. They yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch it now with everything you've been saying. But yeah, yeah. they yeah it they was weren't great. It was tough to rewatch. <laughs> uh, so yeah, all that stuff is happening. Cloud, you know, Cloud's been really strong in the entire game, but for him to like zoom through and cut through buildings, I'm like, okay, we're going like, that's, full yeah. anime here. Yeah, that's where I'm like, I mean, he's genetically enhanced, but he's still just a guy, but whatever. Buildings are made of I guess that was always called... So whatever. <laughs> I guess that was always called into question, too, even in the original, because he fell off of the reactor and crashed through the roof of the church and landed in yeah, flowers. Yeah, there's a lot of fine. people falling off of things and then surviving. But then Gravity's a little different in, things, uh... like, oh, that guy's dead. Also, let, let's circle back around. In that... <laughs> After the bombing mission, there's a bunch of those medics around like, oh, we need a stretcher. You, you hear all those people, the NPCs talk about yeah. that. And just the back of my mind is these are Shinra soldiers from Midgar who, you know, Shinra makes uh, materia, 
why aren't these medics equipped with cure materia? Like, <sighs> what's the possibility? What? How does magic That's work always in this, been in, this in all these games? Like, cure, it's like, you can use it in battle, but it doesn't exist in the outside yeah. world. Oh, no, we need a stretcher. That'll heal that person. <laughs> they put them in, like, the, the bath tanks, because there's a lot of tanks in this game. There's too, a lot of land. tanks. Um, I wouldn't want to go in a Hojo tank. That's that's a very uh, small aside. How did we get to that? Things uh, that don't make sense. Uh, we were talking about the Harbinger. Right. I don't know how we got to that. Uh, I don't... Point is, yeah, it got really crazy at the end there. Um, just full blown crazy stuff, which was it was just, you know great. It was cool. It looked great. Great fights, but... uh, and then you get to like the very final battle where it's just Cloud versus Sephiroth, which you don't even fight. And then that theme starts again. Yeah, um, and then uh, Sephiroth is looking off into the distance into that big universe, and immediately when he's looking off into that universe, I was like okay we're entering some like alternate reality stuff and then part of me really wants this cloud and this sephiroth to be the sephiroth and cloud that comes into like kingdom hearts like oh, there's gosh. other universes out there this is it must go out there <laughs> that's like a weird <laughs> crazy prediction which oh. i think would be really weird if like the very last game is like them going to like a remade uh, kingdom, kingdom hearts, hearts like oh i mean that would explain because cloud was always like oh i'm looking for someone in the first game and so maybe if vincent dies in this remake <sighs> when he's like i must <laughs> i must take <laughs> part of him i must honor him or they fuse and maybe he's not in the game where like uh i don't know he, he goes into the bath to tank and then <laughs> they fuse i together. don't think they're going to cross over with kingdom hearts I just, I don't know. I don't think they would. I don't know. He it went of... off the rails, but. What do you think he meant by uh, you have seven seconds? Well, I have no idea. There's multiple theories on what that is. Um, the time. So the first one is the time that he takes from going from a top of the his his descension down into Aerith into him stabbing her is exactly seven seconds. People have timed it out. And so that like, implies, like, you have seven I love the seconds internet. to, uh, <laughs> I know, like, oh, uh, the other one was, um, oh my god, seven seconds to, uh, some, like, finale thing, I can't remember what it was, or it could, it could just be, like, a reference to, like, the end of the world or something, but, uh, I feel like maybe that's too on the nose, um, I feel, I'm not sure, I also don't know, like, if this is a different, if this is a, like, you gotta imagine that this is a different Sephiroth. So, mm -hmm. like, the other Sephiroth is still, like, frozen in the ice somewhere. And, like, is the black material gonna come into forth? Like, what is Sephiroth's plan, you know, basically? Um, were you fooled at all when, well, like, I mean, like, got stabbed? Because I didn't think that he was I, good. I figured there was gonna be something. They didn't do a good job but... of that because it was, like, he got healed, like, right away. I'm like, oh. They didn't, yeah. And it was in the trailers and... You know, I, I kind of tried to avoid the trailers. That but I last saw trailer, one of the later ones. I avoided that last trailer and then I rewatched. I'm like, why did they put all this stuff? That's why yeah. did you do that? And that could have been like, and a... I just, yeah, yeah. His motivations aren't weird, which is, you know, in the original. Well, and it's, I mean, he's around somewhere, but we've, ne are we sure we've ever really encountered Sephiroth in this game, or has it always been one of the clones? Yeah, like, uh, I've never really understood how exactly Sephiroth works. So I it's don't. Like, there's the reunion yeah. people, and the Genova cells react to the reunion people, and then he's able to, like, Because in the original of... game, like you said, the real Sephiroth was in the ice. Yeah. So, is he, are these just all clones? Like, that final fight? I mean, every, every other Sephiroth we've met was a clone. It's you can think up of it, until the final fight, which we're not sure if it was the clone or not. You can think of it like a hive mind situation where yeah. I think they say in Advent Children that he's part of the live stream. Like, yeah, I mean, I figure it is Sephiroth, but not the physical not body the physical that's frozen body in the ice. Sephiroth. Yeah, the actual first time you see like his face is on the ship from Junin to a um, yeah. Del Sol. Uh, in the original game, they just did a lot of like hints, like. Uh, you're in prison in the Shinra Tower, which is very different in this game where that's not, you know, you don't get caught at all. 
and then you escape and you see like this huge like blood trail leading up to the office and you see like yeah and then there's the, the sword in, in the president yeah and at this time i don't understand like do you think that sephiroth put him on the balcony like why didn't he just like kill him instead of putting him on the balcony? just threw him out the window yeah yeah I... and then he he survived and then he has a golden gun i'm like okay they're just giving a little bit more time to be a little bit hammy which i thought in that moment that he should have explained that he was the one that exploded that first reactor or something like that there was yeah because never... they never really i mean the characters picked up on it but i didn't remember it, the game ever making it clear to the characters that it was the shinra company that was kind of doing all this to put war with wutai like yeah. to bring yeah. back the war that's something different too that I, I totally forgot to bring up which they they never showed the upper the upper the other avalanche in the other game uh, this one, they no. made it very clear that this is a subsect of, like, a main branch of Avalanche. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's I, I don't, interesting. Was that even ever mentioned in the other game? or? Oh, God. I think in the other in the original? games, yeah. which I will get to later, but I don't think in, like, the actual Final Fantasy VII, it was never okay. really brought up. Because, yeah, I, I always just thought it was them, more or less. Which was interesting to show them up for that uh, Jesse's mission to that uh, warehouse. I'm like, oh, wow, interesting. I did not expect yeah. to see that. And I would not have thought anything other than just being there until someone like brought up like where Avalanche comes from. I'm like, oh, very interesting. Which I guess I won't tease it anymore. I'll just get into it now. So before Crisis was the phone game that only released in Japan as part of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, and it was about the Turks. Uh, like it basically investigated the origins of Avalanche, and uh, towards the end, I guess you find out that Rufus was helping fund Avalanche to basically do a coup d'état against his father. Um, so I did not know that. Yeah, I, I was very surprised when I heard that too. I was like, oh, that's that's interesting because Rufus is kind of like a weird character in the original game where he's never ever around until his father dies and then he just appears. And yeah. then he, and, you know, like, oh, was he in safe hiding or what? And maybe in this game, through later sequels, they'll like kind of delve into like, ah, I'm actually the one that's helping like uh, fund Avalanche for like my own needs and like... Uh, I guess he did it to not only do a coup d'etat against his father, but to also, like, uh, find defectors to, like, punish them, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, Turks are, like, a weird, like, shadow organization. So I really hope they dive into that more, even if they don't go into, like, yeah, that'd be cool. old Turk stuff for, uh, for their sequels. Um, but, yeah, going back to uh, the fight with Severanth with Seven Seconds and stuff like that. And then they kind of just, like, appear on that cliff outside of Midgard, but also in between With some of these things, we get to see Zack. And at first it's just like a weird, Oh, why are they showing like the final battle with him again? We kind of know what happens. And mm -hmm. then he's uh, like, is that it? And then he, he kills everybody on like the first game where like he basically gets taken down. And there's that yeah. quick shot of that other bag of chips, which shows an alternate universe, like a very basic confirmation that this is a different world because yes. of like a, what spot? What the heck? What the heck is the dog? The stamp. Thing? Stamp. Uh, stamp is a different breed on those bag of chips. And he's yeah, he was. Vigar. He's not the beagle. And he, yeah, which he, I that caused so many questions for me. He sees like the big globe over Midgar and people have theorized that it's kind of like a singularity where no matter what version like you're seeing from some plane, it's happening across like multiple time points, basically. And uh, so that's just showing a different version where the whispers were not able to make sure that he dies in that fight and because they're dealing with they Sephiroth, were focused on. Yeah. That's how he's able to survive and, you know, save Cloud. Which, now I will get into the thing I teased about yesterday. They they built Midgar. Midgar is entirely there. What if we get, like, a sequel or expansion next year where it's just, like, an alternate reality where Zack goes to Midgar and does, you know, goes through the entire first game, but through the eye lenses of um, Zach. you know, as Zach and, you know, Cloud's 
not really a party member. Maybe he's off doing some other thing or recovering or something. But, you know, what if Zach interacted with all those characters instead? Uh, which would create such a weird I don't thing where it's like two different universes happening. Um, I don't know if they would do that. I Everything that I read from, like, directors and whatever the game, it didn't seem like it was their intention to change that much. Well, too bad, because you you certainly did change quite a bit already. Especially with that well, last line where it's like, you know, the unknown journey. The unknown, yeah. Um, I hope they don't get cold feet, because I know that this game is very divisive in terms of, like, it not being a straight-up remake and it being, you know, different. I, mm-hmm. I will always, we will always have the original game to go back to to play, and I'm of the mind of, you know, let's get crazy. Let's do something different and you know, not have the exact same game to play in a different, you know, a remade form. So I hope they yeah. don't get cold I, I, with this and are, you know, backpedaling like, oh, you didn't like that? Well, you know, maybe. It's kind of like how I feel about it's... Star Wars, about uh, not knowing how the first part of the new trilogy came out. Like, I'm not sure if, how I'll feel about this one until the other ones come out. And it was where one of those things where because of like the directors and the writers were always different. Mm-hmm. There was never a singular vision. And I just hope that doesn't happen with this again. Basically. Yeah. That would be, that would be good. I, yeah, I don't know what I, what I would want. I, I think it would be kind of weird, maybe not like overly weird, but to have a 40 hour game where 37 of those hours are besides filler and whatnot following the original exactly and then everything else just goes off the rails well people, but, uh, i mean it's not a it's not out of the realm of possibility people kind of theorize that this is not called final fantasy VII remake part one or something like that and the reason why they call it remake was this, this is, is the a remake, remake <laughs> of just that one part and because they went into like that portal for like another universe type of thing or whatever they did then the rest of the series will be called something else completely and that's why you know it's called a remake it's and they can't really talk about how it you know the name until you actually like beat the game and it's like okay you know that that sort of makes sense um Mm -hmm. i saw a theory out there where um like the only time you will know like the first big revelation where like these characters are actually like not in just like a different timeline but like an actual different universe is uh, going to Gold Saucer and then seeing Jessie performing as an actress on stage and then like seeing her and then having her not recognize them. Nice them, yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay. And then like right after that is Cosmo Canyon where they thought that Red 13's grandfather would be like, oh yeah, you're, you know, this is what's happening. You're definitely not from this universe or something like that. Because he always seemed like he was also very connected to the planet as well. And and they kind of did that in this game too yeah I mean, they played that up a bit yeah they definitely one of those moments where like Aerith touched him and then all of a sudden he became like oh i know everything i am wise <laughs> yeah kind of a weird thing where she has to touch the planet why didn't she do that for everybody i, I don't know, you know. <laughs> she has these magic powers or whatever and uh but we haven't really worked out the rules yeah exactly i feel like that's the same with a lot of games especially like square enix but um I will Especially say, Final Fantasy. going into this I mean, this game based on like their past records, I was very, very nervous about you know how things would go, and now I feel like very I rejuvenated was, with my. Faith I was very that. glad. I really liked Final Fantasy fifteen. I mean, I did, but that game definitely you hit chapters like seven or nine, eight when it goes very and then that, and like drops. Whenever off. you get to, um, I can't even think of the name, but the the city where Luna is, Alt- Altitia or something like that. And it's it's very linear, which that's fine. I didn't mind that. But it was very rough, rushed. They, like, introduced things and didn't explain them. And it was just such different pacing from the beginning of the game. And th- there were some pacing issues with this game, but they were spread throughout. And it wasn't so much that it was rushed. It was, it was filler sections. Like in chapter 14 or whatever when you go into the sewers with leslie and then you're chasing down that that little thing that stole the the necklace 
I mean, that, that chase scene itself went on for too long, let alone the sewer level. It was just kind of like, what? what's yeah. happening? Like, we have to go save Aerith. Why are we running through the sewers? He had a 15. He definitely looked like he came from, like, the Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> yeah, I don't know he if it's, like, the hat that just made him look like he belongs to that universe or what but uh, and then every time uh chandley was like i've developed a new materia all i could hear was ignis come, <laughs> come up with a new recipe <laughs> recipe yeah uh did you finish uh i i don't think uh you have to beat no i have okay. to do um i have to get my magic materials leveled up and i am missing a couple of the weapon okay that's things, kind of and then cool i think there's about his character at the very very okay. end of that quest yeah now. Because, uh, yeah. yeah, I just finished it yesterday. Um, God, what else? Um, the, the only reason why I think that they might do, like, a weird bid quill with Zack is just because of, like, them taking so long to make the game. And, you know, they have Midgar built, so what if we just reuse it? I mean, they've done that exact same thing with other, like, mid quills as well. Like with Final Fantasy Thirteen, they dragged that out. But I hope they don't yeah. do that. I... I mean, I would play it, but I would love to see some other areas besides Midgar. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if we ha if we get to have, you know, if, if the choice between, I guess, if there's two different teams and we get a choice to between, like, having a new game every year, like, maybe they'll do a Switch thing where it's uh, not Nintendo Switch, but, like, you know, no, yeah. there's an off year Party and Switch. a main year, then an off year, then a main year, or something like that. But, like Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, I, get, I guess bringing that back to Star Wars... Uh, again with that um and uh so okay you you were talking about you have some thoughts about well you i guess just because i had some slightly different thoughts with like bits i mean and i stuff guess and... yeah more just saying in the reality where we played most of the game biggs is super dead but whether we're in a new reality at the end of this game or we just saw a glimpse into another reality. I mean, that's yeah, that's the reality where, yeah, it's unclear. where Biggs is. That could also... But it's unclear if we're in that reality or if we just saw a f ripple effects from different realities. We don't even really know that the reality where we saw Zack alive and the reality where we saw Biggs alive are the same reality. Yeah, we can at least say that Cloud's reality and Zack's reality are two different because they pass between yeah. each other. Um, well, yeah, and I mean, yeah, I wouldn't make, yeah, if, if Zack was alive in Cloud's reality, I mean, I don't know how their version of time travel would work, but I mean, Cloud would essentially have no reason really to be there. Uh, well, here's if Zach a was alive. crazy theory. Uh, what if by the end of this game they do like a weird, crazy like Avengers thing where like it's the Cloud verse? And like all these versions of Cloud come together to fight. Well, because these... there was that scene in the church, like when he was uh, after he fell off the reactor, and like he had a dream of himself waking himself up. I think that might have been like a hint of you know how he had his um when Tifa jumps into live stream to talk to Cloud, he has all those different things like in his head. I yes. think that was just like a weird like head thing. A nod to that. Okay. Yeah. That's all I got from there. But uh, I think it'd be really but... funny if all these versions of Cloud fight all these versions of Zeph at the very end. Uh, and then maybe Zach as uh... well. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, they, they ended the game with Cloud still thinking that he's Zach, which gets doesn't get revealed until... Uh... That's much... Oh, in, in the live stream. In the live stream, that's when it happens. So yeah. right when the planet opens up in, like, Medeal... So that's uh, at the very end of disc two. Quite a ways away. Yeah, quite a ways yeah. away. Um, so they, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Nobody seems that concerned with the insane headaches Cloud seems to be having. And obviously they're like, oh, are you okay? But nobody seems overly concerned. I'm glad you brought that up because that's another thing when we talked about who can see the whispers and who can't. Most of the game, Cloud is seeing Sephiroth. But yes, I was at the when they were in Hojo's lab. I'm like, did everybody else see him or did Cloud just leap up and attack nothing? Yeah, here's a theory on that. So if you looked at like the the enemies, uh, the data on Dreamweaver talked about, you know, how it can make things appear as visions. 
So I guess you could think that maybe because of Cloud's connection to the the clones, he's only able to see it. But because they're but so close to Jenova at dream, that point, yeah. uh, the dream Because it Weaver, definitely seemed like everyone was able to see him in Hojo's laboratory. Yeah. Like, once you met up with the party again. Since they're so close, like, the, the Dreamweaver was able to, like, cast more of a shadow on everybody. It's the one way you could, like, think of that. Um. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not like exactly explained, but you know, you could you could make That's up fine. a reason <laughs> like that. Um, so they that that shot of Biggs also might just be of like Biggs first starting to get into the orphanage. Like that might be like way before, not even related to him yeah. falling off a cliff. That might be just like in Zach's reality, showing him like this is where Biggs is. Yeah, where Biggs is. Like, oh, this is just me in the beginning of right when I started up with avalanche or like before avalanche and you know this orphanage found me or something like that because they they talked about how he you know helped them out so that might have mm-hmm. been like a red herring to make you think that he's alive and cause it just wouldn't make sense if if he like okay i can understand how wedge would survive up to that point because he fell off Aerith healed him and then yeah. i don't know he fell into but a secret lab he, and apparently i he's mean okay. I, there was no whatever it they didn't make it seem like Biggs passed out. I mean, that was a... he He's dead. Yeah. Like, when it happened in the game. I, I think that Jesse and Biggs probably are dead. It would make it would make more sense that that Biggs they showed would part... Like, would be part of maybe Zack's reality of the Whispers mm-hmm. not being able to kill or something. But, yeah. I mean, that, that tower explodes. And it make, it just seems like he died when Cloud touched him. And it seemed like Jesse died when you know, so, Cloud... That, blew, yeah, so. like, Cloud was there for both of their deaths i didn't feel like oh they're unconscious i'm just gonna leave them here now of like course. that was a a death uh right after that the whispers could have like taken their bodies and like whisked them away i don't know i don't know if you don't see someone yeah. die people could still be alive who knows what other characters are true, but we did see them die i mean seemingly i mean unless you're gonna just start saying every time you see an on-screen death it's i mean you never know it's yeah <laughs> I, mean... I mean i guess nobody stood up and went I mean, there wasn't like Doctor McCoy going. Well, he's dead, Jim. Yeah, but no one's head got it ripped. Seemed off. like, yeah, that's true. Okay, everybody was completely intact, but those seemed like death scenes to me. Um. So what 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 do you think's gonna like? What do you think the sequel is gonna be like? Where do you think we're gonna end at? I don't know. I because I've told you like you're replaying the original game again. Midgar is like. I mean, you can speed through that game in, like, two hours if you have all the cheats yeah. on, but even with all the cheats, it's, like, maybe four, six hours tops in, yeah, like, a 50-plus hour RPG. Like, Midgar is, like, a tenth of the game, if that, mm-hmm. you know. There's so much of the game, you know, rest. And... I... I don't have strong feelings. I, I don't want... I, I'm fine with, like, Zach being, you know... A character in the next game. I don't want to replay the first game as Zack. Or like the this remake version. I don't want to spend another game in Midgar. Even if it's different. I want to go on with the story in some degree. I don't want to replay it again. Well that's why I said there might be two teams. Where you know 2021 will get the Zack game. And then 2022 will mm-hmm. get like the actual continuation. Yeah. Um, or it could be just like a weird expansion. Where you do like one mission with them. But I mean otherwise like. Showing him would be weird. I kind of don't want to play Zack. I don't want to do a, a thing with like the Kingdom Hearts where you go through one part of the game that's Cloud in that party, and then like there's the other part of the game where you flash back. Do you to want to s- have to like switch every like sixty minutes too and go back and forth between them? <laughs> yeah, the dream. You have no choice. <laughs> dream Drop Distance. <laughs> I, I mean, I really enjoy Dream Drop Distance, but I did too. Uh, that would be weird to have that reality <laughs> just go back and forth. Um, I know, like, a lot of people were very upset by the changes. I'm not. But until I see where they're going, I don't know if I would want a game that more follows the original story or a game that goes off. I really can't speak to that until I see where the changes are going, what I would prefer. I've seen people also complain about the fact that um, the game is very linear, and it's like, well, congratulations, that's that's exactly how it was in the original game. And, like, the big revelation is like Midgar feels like this that you got to place, the open world yeah and you got to the open world like wow there's so much game left like I thought mm-hmm. from all the commercials and stuff like that this was gonna be the entire game like no that's a huge world which I think 
is going to be... And I'm wondering, like, in next games, I'm thinking they'll give you more, you know, party freedom and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, who you're going to have in your party, kind of more open world. And maybe they won't, but I'm I'm wondering if they'll do that. Because, like you said, that's how the original game was. Midgar was very linear. I think they'll create a Final Fantasy XV type thing where it's going to be like a big open world. You'll have a hub, at least. Yeah, which might mean that it might take a little bit longer. Because even though that they have like the engine and stuff figured out, it's mm-hmm. you know a little bit bigger to do like a huge open world like that. And, yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be huge, though. Yeah, it doesn't have to, I don't. Final Fantasy XV I mean, was, I, like, too big, but you know what I mean, like, to have an actual, like, no, I know. open issue. I'm hoping world. they've got a good start on the next game. I think they do, but How another thing going? that's weird is this is the end of the console generation, and that means that they'll be working on this for the next one, presumably, which might run yeah, into that's... some weird stuff as well, because they're, you know, new I technology. I bet at least the next, well, it depends on when it comes out, but the next one will be for both, but hopefully they're planning it for the five. Yeah. But it'll... Um... Well, and then we don't even clearly know how crossplay and that kind of stuff is gonna and backwards compat not crossplay but backwards compatibility is gonna work yet on the five. Yeah, they they're weird, um, kind of cagey about what will and what won't. It seems like the like the top PS4 games will work, but if you put a disc in or if it's digital, they're not really clear on that. I mean, this pandemic stuff is like put stuff on hold. That's another thing that makes me afraid. It's yeah. like, okay, is this gonna make the remake sequels take longer because we don't know, you know, how that's going to yeah, affect things. I... So, it's, you, like, in regards to Final Fantasy VII, in regards to the PS5 as well, it's like, I don't know how things are I think out. we could see a delay on the 5 for sure. Yeah. I don't know about 7. Like, I don't know what their policies are. If this is stuff, like, some people can work from home at. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I do think they do have probably a roadmap um but how much they have done with this next one is unknown yeah i think though that now that they have like this first one came out and it is like reviewing well for the most part and you know selling well as well as 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 good as it can without you know physical editions all being out there um, yeah no i'm i'm usually one I won't play an episodic game until it's all out, but I obviously wasn't going to do that with this. But that's always my fear with these kind of games. It's like, man, what if they just stop? I want, I want three. I mean, three would make sense for the discs, but because the first game is like not that much content, it's kind of like, ooh, is the next one going to be like ultra huge too? Like, I'm... or they could cut out some of the like some of the stuff was a little. Okay, here, here, and... here's my thought. There's a lot of stuff they could cut out. So mm-hmm. I would love for them. The first disc ends with Aerith dying. And it would be great if they go up to that moment. But that's so much stuff to pack in there, even if they cut out content. Because they <laughs> yeah, that's get still out of a lot. Midgar, they go to Calm, and Calm is where... Unless they don't make it... Unless it's more of a 60-hour game instead of a 40-hour game. But Yeah, there's like places they could cut out. Like... um. Because, I don't remember, was it Junon had... I mean, you could still have Junon, but there was some stuff in there that was... I think Junon's very important for some reasons, um, but they could combine okay. old stuff with that. So, I think they should start off in Calm with Cloud going through the flashback, which they didn't even have to make Calm. Calm was very small, so they didn't even have to do that much work on it. And then... There's like that Chocobo Ranch, but they don't even need to have like a big thing with that. And that was only there yeah. just to, you know, you be... Read your Chocobos. To get the Chocobo to cross the swamp. And they could like delete the cave in between that. They could just have you go from Chocobo to Junin. And they mm-hmm. have that weird Fort Condor, which I... Oh, yeah. I don't think they should have that in the game. Like some people might be upset, but it's like, that's eh, kind of... There was like a weird filler. tower defense mini game there, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, oh gosh. They don't need to have that if we want to get like faster, you know, sequels or at least like yeah. more straight through stuff. And that definitely feels. That we definitely don't need like Fort Condor. I'd rather have, I'd rather have like a filler Jesse episode than Fort Condor. <laughs> um, but I think they could combine some Rocket Town stuff with Junin because when you get to Junin and you get to the airport, you see, like the high wind there, and that could be a great opportunity to just have like the the science division be there as well for like the rocket ship Mm -hmm. and stuff like that 
and have Siv Siv have Sydney Siv. there. Um, I to that's him. my hope is in the next game. I hope we get the rest of the cast. I somehow don't think I feel like Vincent's really far away and I'd, Sid's really far away, but you get Sid after Vincent. Yeah, so that's, that's why I think. That, and I don't. When do you get Kate Seth? I don't remember when you get uh, Kate. Gold Saucer. Okay. Kate Seth is the next person. Well, I guess technically it's it's Yuffie because you can get her outside of Junin in the forest. Then Kate Seth, yeah. then Vincent, and then Sid. Sid. My prediction is, or at least I hope they, will add in Red Thirteen as a playable character. And then yeah, obviously. they should add Sid in earlier at June, and I think that would make sense to get rid of Rocket Town. And then Kate Sith being somewhere in between there. And then I think they should probably save Yuffie and Vincent for the end, because cramming in, let's see, one, two, three, that, I, four, five new characters in the next game for playable it's a feels lot. like a yeah. lot. And that would kind of make sense, too, because Yuffie and Vincent were optional characters. So to have them be together and like not together, but have them both be picked up in the third game. I think they could tie in Yuffie. With but a Vincent lot of... was so cool. I would just like to have Vincent sooner. <laughs> that is true. That, that, that I'm very torn about like that, saying that stuff. I like, don't want him in the third game, but it makes sense. Uh, Yuffie, because they talked about uh, Wu Tai a lot more in this game than they ever did in the original. I think it would make sense to have her be like you actually go to Wu Tai like as a way later kind of end game thing for the final and then vincent put him you know they'll definitely go through nibelheim in order to you know mm -hmm. do the uh stuff to get to the city some, of the some ancients. flashback and story yeah but vincent could definitely be they could put him somewhere else for sure i haven't really thought about where they could put him like maybe he's frozen next to sephiroth or something <laughs> or maybe he's in the city of ancients and like they you know uh you know earth dies and then they get him immediately as soon as the next game starts up. Um, yeah, I guess we should talk about that. Um, do you think Aerith is going to die or or not? It it really depends on on how much they're going to change things. I wasn't sure, you know, if they were adding these branching possibilities just to be like, now we can save Aerith, or I've seen some theories about um, them. Like them doing that if, is cloud if messing they're with not, the players to make you think that there's gonna be a choice when he's gonna take yeah, that choice that's, away. I think it's going to be really dependent on how the next what the next game's like. You know, if they've really gone and into like an alternate universe and they change like all kinds of stuff, yeah, she could. But if everything is more or less the same as the original, I think I think she's going to die and I guess that just comes down to are they making a remake or a reboot? If they're re making a remake, then I think she has to die. If they're making a reboot, then I think they can do whatever they want. Or reimagining reboot, you know. Um, yeah, reimagining reboot. Words, I just yeah. not a not a straight remake. I have four ideas on Era. Uh, one part of me wants her to die because, like, her death is you know how she saves the planet by becoming one of the life stream and being able to like activate holy like her death is not meaningless like she mm -hmm. she knew that she had to die in the original game like i feel like they're like her death was just like oh yeah you can't revive me just because i you know she made the choice to die it's like a surprising thing that she didn't know she was gonna die you know i feel like she knew yeah she she went there knowing i got always had the feeling yeah um two very possibly could have a choice system where you could say that you want her to die, but then you'll get like a bad end. You'll get a bad sequel in the next one, depending on your character choice. Or if you let her uh, die, then you'll get like the quote unquote, the good original, you know, ending, or maybe it's yeah. like opposites, but that'd be so ambitious for them to make two. That, different I was just say, and has final fantasies never really had choice in it. I mean, this game kind of does with how you interact. You can have like, kind of like the um, the gold saucer date night. You can have yes. a conversation with Tifa, Barrett, or Aerith. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't yep. change final the Fantasy story has that never much. Had stuff like that. It's it's exactly yeah. what you said. It's very small things. We get little Easter eggs, or little small. Like I remember the original. You had a lot of like choices you could make for dialogue, but it was just that. It was just how Cloud reacted to what was said. It didn't impact 
what happened next. Yeah, like you get the flower from Aerith if you decide to buy so it. it would be, and you can give it to either it, Tifa or Or Marlene. keep it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and, you know, that's stuff like yeah. that. Nothing really detrimental to the so story. So I just, I think it would be cool, but I don't think that's going to. God, so ambitious. It would be so crazy to do that. Or uh, another, another, my third thing with Aerith is she will die, but it'll be a different place to, like, throw people off. Because they want, I feel like they want to recreate that moment of surprise and you don't know when that's going to happen. Yeah, I could see that. I could see it being like, oh, we saved her here everything's fine but then kind of like one of those fake wills out things and then like three hours later she dies some other way exactly like they could save her at the city of ancients but then at the very end of the game it's just like no i gotta i got this uh holy material in my head which you know she she mentions that she has something in her ribbon but you never see it and i'm just thinking in the back of my head yeah. with the size of material like does she have like a giant ball <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> they play they play fast and loose with uh, the size of with material. The game. size of material, yeah. Uh, for Aerith lives, or someone else dies in her place, which I think would be the worst choice for them to make. That would be. There's also maybe kind of the cop out version of where Aerith dies, but they're doing alternate realities, and at the end they end up in a different reality where she's still alive. Yeah. Yeah, she so could, you get the happy ending kind of thing. She she could have a thing where she dies and then she comes in later on. That's a victory moment. Like, hey guys, I'm not the heir that you know. I'm from another universe. And she's like, uh, yeah, like uh, Final Fantasy I'm Ten to you know, where she's wearing like cut off shorts and has guns. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? And she's wearing like a mask too. Like, oh, who's this crazy girl with like things that look like Aerith but it's not Aerith? And then she takes off her mask. Obviously, like, oh man, crazy. It's Aerith. That'd be cool. I'd be yeah. happy to that. What could I do? I you? Uh, of the of the choices you listed, they either keep it the same. I do think it would be interesting though, kind of have the red herring like, oh, we're doing all this. We could save her. We did save her, but nope, have to die anyway. Yeah, it's like one of those. And fakes. just have, have that shock value of it happens later or at a different time when you think it's fine. Kind of like the singularity of the you know the big huge bomb thing happening in midgar one of those things that just can't yeah. change a constant or it's like even like yeah we've we've beaten fate by killing the harbinger whisper or whatever but can you really beat fate kind of thing yeah yeah and I, I... but i think it all depends on how uh, on what they're doing next yeah uh, one thing's for sure no matter what they do i'm like a hundred percent in like no matter what they do, I can't wait. Yeah, it's just the waiting. Yeah. I I can't give a good answer of of what I would prefer if I prefer a remake the, or a reboot. But the waiting is the I'm hardest in. part. Oh my gosh, it's it's gonna be at least a year. Well, uh, yeah, of course it's gonna be it's at least a year. It's terrible. So long. It's gonna be so long. My feeling is three years i think if they're gonna no really... that's a terrible idea i know but that's I... a terrible shut your mouth i know let's compromise it too well I, yeah i i feel like they could maybe put something out in two but because of the console skip generation on, it's kind of just, like a weird just, thing just be like assassin's creed pull one out every year except for last year I mean, that's why i said they could do a lot of side stuff since they have stuff made like yeah it's it's crazy it'd be so weird to keep going back and forth between like I mean, the cloud stuff and the zack sequels and yeah yeah i don't know what they're gonna know. do but i'm excited to uh see. i'm in i could very possibly hate exactly where they go in the next game like wow this sucks but this yeah everything like but I, I, at this moment i'm in based on like graphics music story stuff combat like i can't see myself like hating it unless they do something weird with the story or like yeah. drop off on production levels like the voices suck or you know something like that but otherwise i have no reason to doubt that they will ace the no. next one as well maybe cut down on those sections where they force you to walk yeah someone said that that might not even be like an open world where they might do a final fantasy 10 thing where it's it's linear and kind of open but it's you know I, you're going through the world, but as a more straightforward path. I really don't mind the linear part of it. You know, if they want to do it chapters and linear, linear, well, I can't say it, but linearly for the rest of the series, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, no. 
I mean, I'm sure afterwards we'll, we'll think of like a hundred things we also should have added into this discussion, but I took a lot of notes and we went through most of the stuff. But I know there'll be like one thing like oh, I can't believe I forgot to talk about that, that one thing. An addendum. I like I said I no, listened. To I it. I, really... I thought I would like it, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, my thoughts too. Like I think I'll like it, and... but I walked away like just like meeting my expectations pretty much. And it took me a while to finish it like i just finished it yesterday but i didn't have any spoilers other than i had heard the ending changed so i was i was happy to go into that without really knowing what was going to happen and i know i was killing you because i'd keep texting you like oh i bet this and you couldn't stop confirm guessing or deny things. anything yeah, i was just like oh you don't know it's just yeah it was just like i said i was but... sitting on stuff and i have listened to podcasts and stuff and there's a lot of things like, oh, they didn't talk about that. I wish they would have talked about that. And I feel like there's probably someone listening now like, why didn't they talk about this one thing that I really enjoyed? Yeah. Well, there's so much. I Yeah, there is. So I much. think every chapter had a moment that I was like, that was cool. Part of me was just like, let's just go through the entire thing. Let's just make this a seven hours so, podcast. Like, okay, yeah, no this kidding. line, did you like that? No. Okay, let's move so, on. So just to confirm for the things at least that we're aware of that can have kind of choices in chapter 14, I think we both got Tifa yeah. for the conversation. I guess in the train, if you take too long, you just bail on the train and let Tifa jump out on her own, too, instead of, like, Saving her? cushioning her fall. Yeah. Oh. That's not, that's, I, I ha thanks for being that. That's another moment where it's just like, yeah, yeah, they can jump off trains that are okay. They can fall off buildings that are um, okay. It's like, okay, what are they? You know, they're super. And I, I guess the whoever your party is in the fight against Sephiroth at the end is random. So I had Tifa and Aerith, but like when I was following up on stuff after I finished it, most people had like Barrett and I'm like, I didn't have Barrett in my party during that fight. So that was kind of cool finding out that it was apparently random. When you said that to it me, it took a long time to find, to find a Reddit thread where people were actually talking about it. It's been like a month I since like, I like, did it. So I'm like, I just like I remember just everyone being there, but I'm sure if I actually did it, like, oh yeah, it was actually only this section or whatever. So, yeah, like it starts off as just Cloud, and then like Aerith came and like stopped an attack that Sephiroth was doing, and then Tifa showed up and saved Aerith and Cloud again. Yes. So it was kind of they had like cutscene introductions staggered throughout, but right. Okay, well, I think that will wrap it up for us. So, um, well, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks, viewers, for watching this. And um, yeah, what did you think of the Final Fantasy VII sequel? Let us know. Uh, and you know, if you hated it, cool. If you liked it, great. But uh, let's be uh, civil about it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, like I said, very divisive. So. Uh, until next time, I guess this is me and bye to Lauren and uh... see you guys. <laughs>